Hey, good morning. Welcome back, everybody. Today's show is all about the basics, and I'm real excited that pastry chef Lisa DeReicher, who uh, makes all sorts of wonderful things at Zupa's in Nina, is here to share one of her basic cookie recipes. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I do struggle with cookies sometimes. Okay. And you know, for a long time, I just said the heck with it. And um, I'm going to let a secret out here. My kids thought homemade cookies were the kind that come in the roll, <laughs> the chocolate chip, until one day Ireland begged me and said, Mom, you are a great cook. We can do this. Yes. Um, but sometimes they'll get too flat. Sometimes they're too puffy, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, or hard or, you know. Um, so this is, the, this is the great, perfect recipe, right? This is. This is a very good basic recipe. And from this recipe, you can go in a lot of different directions. I love it. So, okay, so nice. let's talk about while we go through this, some tips and tricks on how to do really great great cookies. Okay, so, terrific. Uh, we got some butter, I see. You're yes. using butter, and you use all butter. You don't split it and do a butter exactly. margarine, right? Yep, I okay. use all butter, and okay. I'm actually using unsalted butter. Okay. Uh, you can always add salt to it, but you can't take it out if you get too much in there. If you're using uh, butter that uh, is salted, you might not want to add any extra salt. And I know recipe. I hear from you guys too that um, unsalted butter is much fresher. Yes. Uh, you know, so that's a good tip. It's a lot purer product mm -hmm. too, so it's really going to add some nice flavor to your cookies. Now you soften this, right? We pulled yes. it out of the fridge. Yep. Uh, Yep, I have it into little cubes here so that it'll soften a lot quicker. Uh, sometimes at work, I will take my butter if I'm making you know, a huge batch of cookies, and I'll slice the pounds of butter into slices and lay them out. And that way, they'll come to room temperature a lot sooner. Good tip, but um, microwaving it usually doesn't work. So if you can think about it, pull it out. Can you even pull out like the night before? Uh, that would be a little too long. Too long. You would want maybe a half an hour or okay. so. Okay. All right. Good tip. So, Good all deal. All right. Okay. So we're going to start first by creaming our butter. Okay. And what I have here is two sticks or a cup of butter, which is also half a pound. And we're going to put that in our stand mixer. I'm going to use the stand mixer just to kind of help us get this all mixed together. Now, you could do this in a bowl with a, a spoon or a spatula, uh, but I make cookies a lot so and in huge batches. So I tend to use equipment in order to make my job go easier. And you know what? Uh, if you're really getting into cookies, uh, invest in one of these stand mixers. Yeah, it's a really quick way to do it, too. Yeah, yeah. And paddle. You're using the paddle yep. attachment. I'm using the paddle. If we use the whip, it's going to incorporate air into the cookies. So we want to just use the paddle attachment so that just every Everything gets mixed together. Okay, so first we just start creaming the butter alone. Sometimes at home exactly. I'll put the butter and sugar in here and start creaming it. Nope, start with butter first. Start with just the butter. Okay. And we want to cream it. It takes about three minutes. We just want to make sure all of the chunks of butter are out and our butter is nice and smooth. Okay, so let's pretend we let three okay. minutes go by. And all right. Sugar. We add sugar. I've got a half a cup of white sugar. Okay. And I've got a cup of brown sugar. Now I've changed the proportions. Normally when you see cookie recipes, like Full House cookies, they have an equal amount, three quarters of a cup of each. I've changed these proportions so that our cookies come out a lot uh, moister, okay. so that they're chewier. Good, now, good the, point. the thing that I'm looking for is shelf life. Our cookies may sit out on uh, the counter mm -hmm. at work, mm -hmm. so I want to make sure they stay nice and moist. Great. The great. more white sugar, the drier they'll be. Very, oh. very true. Right. I love brown sugar in cookies. I think yeah. it just tastes better, you know? Yep. It's really rich. Eggs. How many eggs? Two eggs. And then do you put them one at a time, or does it not matter? It doesn't matter for cookies. Some recipes it does, but for cookies it doesn't. Okay. We just want this to mix together until the eggs are completely incorporated. And we may need to scrape down the sides. Some of the butter gets stuck on the sides of the bowl. So is that something you do often too, is kind of stop the mixer and yep. get in there with a, a, a spatula? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yep. We want to make sure this is all creamed together. And that looks about right. Okay. And we'll add to that some vanilla bean paste. Which is Lisa's yes, favorite. Yeah. If you see her on the show before, uh, she loves her vanilla bean paste I or do. really nice vanilla. Um, you know, get the good stuff. Don't use the imitation stuff. Yeah. Yep. If you do have the liquid, it can be. It's the same proportion. Okay. One teaspoon. All right. So next, we can add in our flour. And Lisa loves King Arthur flour. Yes. Okay. And sometimes you might need to use a little bit more. Yes. A couple tablespoons or up to a quarter of a cup more in recipes. Yes. For all-purpose flour, um, that's not uh, the King Arthur like I use. You need a, a two and a fourth cups. Okay. And this is two and a half cups. Okay. Good actually. to know. So, yeah. It's tip. got a little bit. Uh, Powdery or texture. Okay. So I noticed my cookies started spreading more oh. than, I want, than I wanted them to. Okay. So I upped my flour a little bit and that helped. Good tip. All right. So we also need to add a half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. 
Now, sometimes when I, I pull that baking soda out of the um, container, it's a little clumpy. Yes. Um, you know, and I hate that when you bite into a cookie or a bread or something and you get that soapy flavor. Is that yes, what that's from? That's exactly what that is. That soapy flavor mm -hmm. is from your uh, baking soda that hasn't been, you can put it through a sieve in order to get it really smooth. All right, good so, tip. All right. Now we've got some fun stuff to yes. mix in here. Um, tell go, us what you brought. We can go crazy and have fun okay. at this point. I brought lots of different things that you can mix in. This is your basic cookie dough recipe. Now you can use whatever you have on hand, whatever's in your pantry, something you want to get uh, use up. So you can go in a lot of different directions and or even just kind of tailor your own cookies to your own taste. Absolutely. Or seasonally, you know, what, so, yeah. what's what's in. Exactly. So we've got mini um, little butterscotch chips. Yeah. Those are really fun. I love fun. mini things and cookies. Yeah. Then you get more of them. You exactly. Know I mean? yeah. <laughs> you can use twice as much. <laughs> Pistachios. Mm -hmm. Yum. These are just a really good chocolate chip. Yeah. It's a dark chocolate mm, chip. Yum. Yeah. And we've got dried cherries. Okay. Oh, I love those. Yep. White, white chocolate, chocolate. M&Ms, yep. which the kids would love, uh, pecans, yep. and mini chocolate chips. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm just going to stick with the mini chocolate chips. Let's just. All right. Uh, that sounds you know, good. And maybe we'll add some of the big dark chocolate chips that in there too. That would be too. a so, great combination. It's really nice to use both. So it gives some really good chocolate flavor. I'm all about the chocolate, so, so we'll do yep. some. And about a cup is what the mix-ins are? It's two cups, two cups of whatever variety of things you want to use. Okay, love it, love it. So, And then once the mix-ins or fix-ins or whatever get in there, you can just do yep. let it roll just yep. for a minute? just let it go until it's combined in. Oops, that might be a little too long. And we've got some of the dough already right okay. over here. Now this is the yes. um, this is one that Lisa came up with. I bet you this is one of your son's favorites. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's got the M and M's. It's got some chocolate chips, and it's got some pecans in there. Yeah. So. I know you're a big fan of lining your 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 pans with parchment paper. Yes. Yep. I like to use parchment. It helps the cookies lift off really easy. You don't have to grease them or add any extra uh, fat to your cookies. You oh, so you don't have to spray parchment. them at all. You don't have to spray Love them at all. It. And these little scoops are wonderful. So, yeah, I love those scoops because each cookie comes out uniform. Mm -hmm. Oven temperature? 375 degrees. And depending on the size of cookies, the size that you're making will take about 10 minutes. Uh, you might want to start checking them at that point. What we're looking for is for the cookies to be brown around the edges, but still slightly wet in the middle. Uh, they are going to continue to bake a little bit after you take them out of the oven on the sheet pan, so we don't want to overbake them in the oven too much. Hey, thank you so much for sharing your secrets. Thank I you. love, um, you know, learning from you guys uh, <laughs> so hopefully we steered you in the right direction looking for a basic cookie dough recipe here you go we'll put it on our website and then you can go crazy as far as what you want to mix in there really appreciate it thanks Thank so you. much thanks i think i'm gonna have to have one of these <laughs> <laughs> recipes on our website we'll be back with some more basics so don't go anywhere stay with us